Okay, guys, in this uh, segment, I want to talk about a new concept, uh, something we haven't discussed yet, but something that's really important for circular motion, and that's something um, called centripetal. Try that again. Centripetal acceleration. This is a really important concept. Also, some really important math in here as well. So centripetal acceleration this is an important idea. Uh, let's start by taking a look at this word centripetal. This, uh, you can see the root word uh, center in here. This second word, uh, pedal, means uh, center seeking. This means going towards the center, or center seeking, um, which is, sounds similar, but is very different from this other word. I'll put it over here. There's another word that you might have heard, which is centrifugal force, a centrifugal force. Uh, this is not centrifugal, this is centripetal, centripetal, so that means center seeking. Centrifugal, this word means center fleeing, fugal, this means away from the center. Um, so first of all, before we get into the math, let's, make, let's see if we can try to understand what's going on in, in, in this sort of acceleration. So let's imagine I've got an object that's moving in a circle, so here's this circular motion. Um, Maybe what I've got here, maybe I've got a, uh, uh, a bucket. Let's say that we've got a bucket of water here. This is the bucket of water. And it's on the end of a rope, and maybe I'm swinging it around. So the bucket is on the end of the rope, and it's going around this way. The omega, counterclockwise or positive, we've got this bucket of water that's swinging in a circle. <clears throat> and let's imagine, I'm just going to say that I'm swinging in a circle, and I'm swinging at a constant speed. The omega is constant. So constant angular speed, constant omega. And since this rope is going to be a fixed distance, right? this distance isn't changing because the rope has a certain length, that means that the tangential speed is also constant, constant v tan. So there's no change in the angular speed, and there's no, ta no change in the uh, tangential speed. So the linear speed and the angular speeds are both constant. So the question then I would ask you is, is the bucket accelerating, right? If the, if the, if the angular speed's constant and the linear speed's constant, is the bucket accelerating? And you, you're probably, you should be tempted to say no, right? If the angular speed's not changing, this means, that means there's no alpha, there's no angular speed. And if the tangential speed's not changing, or if the uh, linear speed, the tangential speed's not changing, this means that there's no, um, cent uh, there's no, tangential acceleration. But in fact, if we remember what acceleration means, the definition of linear acceleration, we should realize that there is an acceleration here. So remember that way back when, when we first discussed acceleration, we mentioned that there's three ways to accelerate. There's speeding up, there's slowing down, and there's changing direction or turning. Now, when we say that there's no tangential acceleration. What we mean by that is there's no change in speed. But the bucket is constantly changing directions. It's moving in a circle, so it's the direction is constantly changing, right? So the, uh, the tangential speed, the speed, this would be the tangential speed at that point. Over here, the tangential speed is directed that way. Over here, the tangential speed is directed that way. The direction, the instantaneous velocity, is constantly changing. So it's turning. And since it's constantly turning, there is a kind of acceleration. There is what we call a centripetal acceleration. So since the bucket is constantly changing direction, it's constantly turning, it is accelerating, and that's centripetal acceleration. So. The bucket is constantly turning. And therefore, there's an acceleration. And this type of acceleration is called centripetal acceleration. All right. This word, by the way, is a, um, a word that's frequently used, and it's usually uh, used in a way that's um, actually a, uh, a fallacy. So 
uh, centrifugal, that means away from center, away from center. And there's a temptation to think if I'm swinging this bucket around, like if I'm swinging this bucket in a circle, there's a temptation to think that, that the bucket wants to do this, go that way. Right, because if I'm, if you imagine swinging this bucket, um, you feel like the rope is being pulled out of your hand. So there's a temptation to think that there's a center fleeing or away from center tendency. Now it turns out that's not true at all. There is no such thing. This is not happening. There's no away from center tendency. The tendency of the bucket, from based on inertia, is to go this way, and this is the inertial tendency, right? Inertia. Objects in motion want to stay in motion in a straight line at constant speed. So that's where the bucket wants to go. Now, the reason the bucket doesn't go that way is that the rope is pulling inward. Right? There's this inward pull here from the rope that is centripetal towards the center, centripetal. So this is the centripetal acceleration, A sub C. That's the centripetal acceleration, abbreviated A sub C. There is no centrifugal tendency at all. That's a, that's a fallacy. So when you hear people talk about centri centrifugal forces, almost always um, that's, a, that that's a fallacious tendency or a fallacious force. In fact, the, the acceleration and the force here is centripetal. The reason you feel the sensation of the, the rope pulling out of your hand is inertia. It has nothing to do with some mysterious centrifugal force. Uh, so we've got this, the idea here is that there is an acceleration, and there's, a, there's an acceleration produced, in this case, by the rope. The rope is pulling in on the bucket, keeping the bucket moving in circular motion. And this is true. Whenever there's an object moving in circular motion, there's a, there's a centripetal acceleration. And we'll discuss later that has to be provided by a force. And like I said, in this case, the force was the rope. We'll discuss that a little bit later. But for right now, let's just focus on the acceleration value. So there's a centripetal acceleration. It turns out this acceleration value is related to two things. It's related to the speed, that the, the, in this case the bucket, the speed that the bucket's moving at. And it's related to the radius, how far away from the center the bucket is. And the equation's relatively straightforward. It's the tangential speed squared divided by the radius. That's the equation that will give you centripetal acceleration. Tangential speed squared divided by radius. And this, should make, this equation should make a little bit of sense. If, if the tangential speed's bigger, if the bucket's moving faster, that means that it's constantly turning more. If it's moving faster, it's changing direction more frequently, so it's accelerating more because the direction change is happening faster. If the radius is bigger, the direction change is less because since the radius is larger, it's changing direction more slowly. So it should make sense to you that there's a direct relationship between the acceleration and the tangential speed and an inverse relationship between the centripetal acceleration and the radius. Um, well, there's another way of writing this because let, let's remember that omega is equal to V, or sorry, do that again, write that a separate, different way. Tangential speed is equal to omega times r. So I could substitute in here omega r. I could, I could put this thing here in there. V tan equals omega r, so I could say omega r squared over r. So what does that equal? Well, that's the same thing as omega squared times r. Omega squared times r squared over r is omega squared times r. So we actually have two equations for centripetal acceleration. Either of these equations is a valid equation. So V tan squared over R or omega squared times R. Okay, and that's our equation for centripetal acceleration, the acceleration experienced by an object that is turning, constantly turning, because it's in rotational motion, because it's moving in a circle, right? So this, this thing here is moving in a circle, its direction is changing, and the, uh, the acceleration is related to this radius and how fast um, the object is spinning or moving in a linear speed. All right, let's, uh, let's apply this equation to get a feel for it. First, I want to think about uh, if we're on the surface of the Earth, we are accelerating. We're moving in a circle, and therefore we're undergoing 
a centripetal acceleration. So let's think about this. Here's the Earth. Okay, this is Earth. And here we are, we're on the center of the Earth. Okay, now since the Earth is spinning, we are undergoing a centripetal acceleration. There is a centripetal acceleration here. Um, what I'm implying there is that there's a, there's, I'm being pulled down this way, producing this centripetal acceleration. Now, of course I'm being pulled down. Gravity is pulling me down. What would happen to me if I'm standing here on the Earth? What would happen if we shut off the Earth's gravity? What's, let's imagine that Earth's gravity goes, up, goes away. What would happen to me? Well, if, if the Earth is spinning counterclockwise, what would happen? I would go this way. I would move in a straight line path that way. I would fly off of the surface of the Earth. Because I'm an object in motion, I want to remain in motion, I'm going to move in a straight line path that way. I don't want to move in a circle. I don't naturally want to stay on the surface of the Earth as it rotates. I want to go in a straight line. And if it weren't for Earth's gravity acting, pulling me down, I wouldn't accelerate centripetally. I wouldn't accelerate towards the center. I would go off in a straight line. So Earth's gravity pulls me towards the center. I accelerate towards the center. I accelerate centripetally towards the middle of the Earth. And therefore, I move in a circle. Well, let's calculate that, that acceleration. What is that acceleration? Well, we need to know a few things um, about the Earth in order to do this calculation. First, let's think about what is the radius of the Earth. Well, the radius of the Earth is about 6.4 yeah, times 10 to the 6th meters. That's the radius of the Earth. This is a, this is a 6 right here. 6.4 times 10 to the 6th meters. Okay, well, what about the rotational speed, the angular speed of the Earth? What is that? Well, it's the Earth does one full rotation. This is angular speed of rotation here, not revolution. I'm not thinking about the Earth going around the sun. I'm thinking about the Earth spinning. It does one full rotation, 2 pi radians, in a day. So that's 24 hours, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute, 2 pi divided by this whole thing. That's 7.3 times 10 to the negative fifth radians per second. This is a 7, 7.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. So radius of the Earth right here, this is the radius of the Earth, this is the Earth's angular speed. And I can combine these using this equation, right? Omega squared times r will give me the centripetal acceleration. So now I can say the a sub c, the centripetal acceleration of the Earth as it rotates, is omega squared, so 7.3 7.3 times 10 to the negative fifth squared times the radius of the Earth, which is 6.4 times 10 to the sixth meters. Multiply those two together, and I get this value here, 0 0.034 meters per second squared. That is the centripetal acceleration that we experience when we're on the Earth. Okay, So right here, I am accelerating centripetally towards the middle, at 0 0.034 meters per second squared. By the way, if I'm over here, just to make sure that we understand the picture, if I'm on this point on the Earth, I'm accelerating centripetally again, so towards the center of the Earth. If I were over here, say, I would be accelerating centripetally towards the center of the Earth there. Okay, it's always towards the middle. That's what centripetal means, towards the middle. Now, I want to point out that this acceleration value here is quite small. This is really tiny, right? This is way, 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 way smaller, for instance, than the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And the fact that this is so small, this is why you don't notice the centripetal acceleration that you experience when you're on Earth. You may have found it surprising when I suggested to you that you're accelerating on the surface of the Earth because the Earth is spinning. And the reason that seems surprising is you've never, ever noticed it. And the reason you've never noticed it is it's so small. This centripetal acceleration is tiny, really, really small. And it has, it's, it's so small in part because the angular speed of the Earth here, this value is really small. This omega is very, very small. And so you don't notice this acceleration. The acceleration of the Earth going around the sun is even smaller, so you really aren't going to notice that. Uh, centripetal acceleration at all. 
Um, let's do one more. Oh, I'm running out of space. I'm going to have to go up. Let's do one more calculation. Let's imagine I built a space station. Yeah, I'm going to make a circular space station. Here's my space station out in outer space. And maybe I want to have a space station out here where you could be on the inside of the space station. You could be inside of it, say, right here. And you could walk around inside this space station and feel as though there was gravity, right? In space, there is no gravity. But I want you to feel like you're on Earth inside of this space station. I want you to be able to walk around in here and feel Earth-like gravity. So how could we simulate gravity? Right? There's no gravity in space, but how could we simulate it? Well, what does it mean to feel gravity? Well, to feel gravity means that you're accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared. That's what that means. To say that you're, you're feeling like you're in a gravitational field due to the Earth, it means that you're, you feel this acceleration, 9.8 meters per second per second. Well, if I'm on this, if I'm inside this ring, this this circle here, and I'm walking around, I want to feel a 9.8 acceleration. Well, what if I spin this ring? What if I give this ring an omega? What if I spin it this way? If I spin it, if this ring is spinning, now I'm undergoing a centripetal acceleration, a sub c. And if that centripetal acceleration equals 9.8, I'm going to feel like I'm on Earth. Okay, So I need a sub c to equal 9.8 meters per second squared. If the centripetal acceleration here inside this ring is 9.8, it's going to feel like I'm on Earth. Okay, well how could we achieve that? Well, let's say I've got this space station. Here it is. And let's say that it's a big station. It has a radius here. R is a thousand meters. Kilometers. This is a kilometer radius ring. So what would, what would I have to rotate this? Let's, let's imagine here's the problem. I know that I've got the space station has a radius of 1,000 meters, and I want the, the centripetal acceleration to be 9.8. How fast would I need to spin it? Let's calculate that. So a sub c is omega squared times r. Okay. Well, I want this to be 9.8. My radius is 1,000 meters. So let's just go ahead and calculate what that omega value would be here. Okay, Divide both sides by 1,000, and I'm going to get omega equals the square root of, take the square root here, of 9.8 divided by 1,000. 9.8 divided by 1,000 under the square root, that's going to be roughly 0.1 meter per second squared. Okay. It's another sample calculation, which means on this ring here, I don't have to spin it very fast. In order to feel like I'm on Earth, all I have to do is spin this ring at 0.1. Oh, sorry. I got my units wrong there. The units here are radians per second. All I have to do is spin this ring at 0.1 radians per second. That's not very fast at all. That's quite a slow... Uh, spinning speed. So this thing doesn't need to be spinning crazy fast in order to have Earth-like gravity. This would be a very doable angular acceleration. That wouldn't that wouldn't be hard to do. So you could see if we could build this this giant ring in outer space, if it, it would have to be quite big, right? A radius of a, a kilometer. And if you had this giant ring, you wouldn't have to spin it very fast. And then you could walk inside this ring and feel as though you were on Earth. You'd have this Earth-like gravity of 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, so that's a um, quick intro to centripetal acceleration, center-seeking acceleration that's, that's present any time an object is in circular motion. If an object is in circular motion, it's changing direction. That's a centripetal acceleration. And um, calculate it using two equations, v squared over r or omega squared times r. Um, we'll review this concept a little bit more in class next time and, and do some practice. I'll see you then.